so you took my first joke uh, already, Simon. Uh, I dressed for the occasion, right? Uh, that's why I'm wearing this uh, ridiculous uh, cat shirt, because we're talking about the cool cats. Um, and the cool cats are often, I guess, the developers, right? Uh, the techies we are working together with. Um, before I dive into the actual topic, let me give you a bit of background of uh, Ringier. Um, I think the company is fairly well known, South Africa and also myself. Um, so, Ringier is a Swiss-based business. What I always find surprising, it is around about 190 years old. It's a little bit younger than 190 years. I think it's 186, but if you're that old, these couple of uh, years doesn't, don't matter, I guess. Um, and it is still predominantly family-owned. So again, these two things I find uh, quite fascinating in itself. Um, We've got around 140 businesses or brands uh, in, the, in the holding or in the uh, group. And what's fascinating about Ringier, um, besides the fact that we're 190 years old, but I guess we successfully managed the digital transformation. Uh, Ringier was a printing company. It then started to become a publisher, which is still part uh, of us. But by now, we, I guess, completely transitioned uh, to uh, being a digital company. Last year, we generated uh, a billion dollars, as you guys say here, in uh, revenue. Uh, 135 out of that is the EBITDA. And what's uh, good and interesting for us, and I guess another sign that that uh, transition <coughs> worked out, 79% of the EBITDA comes from digital activities. Who has been to Cape Town before? Or to South Africa? Yeah, some people, nice. Beautiful country, Cape Town is a beautiful city. Um, when I arrived there uh, 16 years ago, uh, there was not all that much tech going on. Uh, we started an initiative called Silicon Cape. Uh, what a great name to uh, build basically an ecosystem um, of uh, tech people in the city. And I guess that was also is, has also successfully or, or, or worked out well. By now, there's around about 40,000 people in Cape Town employed in the tech sector. So that's Cape Town alone, not South Africa. Um, AWS is, I guess, the biggest company with around about 5,000 people. Fascinating fact, what we know now as AWS, um, and specifically the um, EC component of cloud computing, was invented in Cape Town. No one really knows that, but I guess also that's why uh, the presence is so big. Uh, as Ringier South Africa, we've got around about 100 people. Basically, all of them are techies. Uh, we don't do finance, we don't do marketing, but we're all somehow in the bigger tech space. What's interesting, the average monthly salary for a senior developer is only $3,500 a month. Um, I'm not sure about the average salary here in the US, but compared to Switzerland, it's around about a third of what you would pay somebody in Switzerland. So there it's around about $10,000. And again, here it's uh, 3,500. Please don't come to fish in my pond. <laughs> There's uh, great developers, but I want all of them. Now, by jokes aside, if, if you need help, uh, there's quite many companies setting up tech hubs, not only in South Africa, but also in Africa. Please reach out if you need any help with that. That's really what I do. And who am I? Uh, I'm sure you can hear that. Uh, I grew up in Germany. Um, not sure if you guys know, but the German accent was uh, voted as the most sexiest accent in the world. <laughs> uh, the survey was conducted in Germany, but, but yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I've been a, a geek my whole life. Uh, I work with computers since I'm eight years. Um, and as you guys can see, I'm of course a Trekkie. Can you guys do that? Okay, I can't really see, but I, but I hope you can. Um, what's, what's funny, uh, Mid Journey can't do it. Um, I gave Mid Journey the prompt uh, do the Vulcan greeting, but whatever, they, they do some funny stuff. So you're better than Mid Journey, I guess. Uh, yeah, I started my career in Europe as an IT consultant, um, moved into Africa, and happy ever after. I also say I changed the tie, the corporate tie, to kind of e-commerce startup uh, life. All right, uh, herding cool cats. 
uh, why, why did I uh, name the presentation like that? For that, of course, now I'm going to use the big word for the, for the first time, AI. I used AI, um, AI's help to get the uh, answer for that. And I'm not sure if you guys know, but it's quite interesting. You can actually ask uh, um, uh, ChatGPT to write a presentation for you. Um, so as you guys can see here in the, in the bottom, uh, that's the prompt I used. Please write me VBA code for a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I put it into ChatGPT and you then add, uh, add a macro. And that is really what came out here. Um, I gave it that intergalactic cats component. Um, and well, it, it, it wasn't all that great, right? Intergalactic cats are a unique breed of blah, blah, blah. They have adapted and survived, but it added another cool picture. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is uh, ChatGPT. My interpretation of um, herding the, the cool cats or herding cats is somehow different. Um, so as you are herding sheep, you somehow need to control the madness or here a group of people. And I find the last one interesting. It is often used to describe the difficulty of managing a team of people, especially a team of creative or independent thinkers. And I think that is exactly what applies to developers, right? Um, developers, I guess that's the truth, are not necessarily easy to manage. And I guess that is also what the talk is about. Uh, for me, not a surprise, but uh, one of the big takeaways, I think tech is somehow ironically even more important than before. Why do I say ironically? Because as coders, we replace ourselves in the long run, right? It's still going to take some time, but I guess in five to ten years, uh, we, are, we automated ourselves away by the machine. Um, talking about AI, remember two years ago, everybody said, you are on mute. Now it's definitely AI is the most used uh, word. But yeah, um, I asked in my network, why is it difficult for you to manage developers? Uh, and as you guys can see, I said here, it's a non-representative survey with 10 executives in my, in my network. So it was really just like, hey, dude, can you please do me a favor and uh, answer a question? This looks a bit funky. I'm not really sure what happened here. That was uh, actually all the different answers. Um, but uh, I guess the takeaway, as you can guys see here at the, at the bottom, is really I don't understand what they are doing. And I believe that is almost a fundamental problem still in the business world, not only for us marketplace people, but across the board. It's always that black box, and for some reason, many people are scared to really understand what's going on and uh, how to open and understand that black box. Um, there was also some, some other quotes. Uh, yeah, they, they're interesting people. I don't really know how to work with them and so forth. I also asked in the same non-representative survey, uh, it, it was again executives, so CEOs and the likes. Which department do you actually prefer to manage? Um, and I guess there's not uh, too much of a surprise here. Um, so most CEOs, at least those 10 people, are comfortable with sales, ops, and marketing. I guess also finance. I, um, I guess it's a more traditional background for a CEO. But when it comes to IP, it was uh, sorry, IT, uh, only five percent, right? And once a smart man said, we need more technical CEOs in the world. <laughs> this smart man, by the way, that was his last tweet uh, on the 5th of May 2022. I think it was also the first one after five years or so. Uh, but I think what's a, what's a very interesting case, I was surprised uh, two years ago when Nike, Nike appointed their new CEO. Uh, John Donahan, if I remember correctly, and he actually has a tech background. And everybody, everybody asks themselves, how does it work that a, a ex-eBay person uh, is not a CEO of Nike, but they really do that to um, accelerate their digital transformation. So yeah, again, I'm of the opinion, um, as techies, we should be uh, more often in CEO positions. Now, to my actual advice, um, I'm afraid I can't give you the secret sauce. Uh, 
Um, I think 20 minutes is uh, not enough for that. Um, but I'm at least trying to give you some ingredients, and hopefully I can trigger, trigger some thinking how you can handle your tech teams. It's also a pure assumption. I would let you guys vote again, but I can't see you. But my assumption is most of you are in CEO positions or the likes, and you are not technical people. As in, I don't think there's many CTOs. That's the audience I normally talk to. Um, but again, my assumption here is um, you are more the traditional business people. Please correct me if I'm wrong. All right, I think most importantly, what every developer dislikes is being micromanaged. Um, I always remember I once used at the firm and the CEO, uh, I believe the CEO shouldn't do that, but he was very hands-on. And he was hands-on to the extent that he ran to the developers, tapped on their shoulders, and uh, interrupted them in the workflow, and at the end of the day, uh, tried to micromanage them. Please don't get that wrong. Of course, when it comes to the software development workflow, your product managers, your project managers, however you call them, they need to do that to a certain extent. They, of course, need to tell the developers on a ticket level, as we call it, what to do. But please, you, as the person leading the business, don't interfere in that. Trust the people that they are going to do the right job. And I guess that also goes in with my second topic here, freedom. Um, yeah, call them creative thinkers, call them builders, call them makers. Um, give them the freedom to um, let them do what they do best. Um, yeah, next one. That's also an interesting one. Um, at the end of the day, maybe there is nothing like good code or a good product or a good solution. And also here, I think, give your tech team the trust, once again, to um, fulfill their duties, right? But at the same time, and that's the next overarching topic, encourage business decision-making by your tech teams. I think uh, that is very often um, underestimated. The input you can get from your tech teams and uh, that they can ultimately drive good business decisions. Maybe most importantly, and everybody wants that, and we want it at the moment with AI, encourage play and innovation. And I don't think that's going to work. I'm pretty sure most of you organize some kind of uh, hackathons uh, where you uh, let the crazy people play for two days and you expect some kind of uh, outcome. I don't think that is right. What I introduced uh, in my company two years ago is a so-called play day. So every Friday, and I uh, choose a, a Friday purposely, one Friday a month, we don't do any normal work at all, but we just play. And what does that mean? You can try out a new technology, you can work on a specific product, you can work on teams, but again, there is no um, demand on day-to-day -day business. That works, by the way, beautifully with uh, different departments as well. I know of a couple of companies, they do that across all the um, different departments, so that's not only tech, right? And what happens almost automatically here is innovation. So our products as Ringier South Africa and Ringier The Group, uh, most of our now big products actually came out of Playday. We've got a content distribution uh, um, engine, We've got uh, different blockchain products. Um, we've got now different AI products. And again, all of that came out of Play Day and the different innovation initiatives. So again, here, I can encourage you to encourage your people to do that. I know it hurts if 100 people don't work for a day. That is going to uh, cost you quite a lot. Um, but again, I think the, the results can be quite interesting. I can do if you guys want, can give you some examples what we are working on when it comes uh, to AI in marketplaces. We experiment at the moment with uh, conversational search. I think we've also seen it over the last couple of uh, days. Um, so you can write longer queries, but we don't only do that. We also rewrite the search result to fit better to your um, search query. We also rewrite content on our social um, uh, on our social posts, 
automatically. And I think that's pretty interesting uh, reference and back to the SEO workshop. We also use, uh, I think it was called retired pages. So uh, basically pages who are not really in use anymore, but have lots of SEO authority. Um, we use AI to rewrite the content there um, automatically because then uh, it's a refresh content and Google likes it more. So again, that is what we are working on, a few examples uh, when it comes to the AI topic. And one more time, that came out of uh, play on innovation and it wasn't like a specific task uh, where the CEO, to CEO told somebody to do things. Also important, just like last night, I heard some people went to watch uh, basketball, others got drunk at a karaoke bar. Um, celebrations, right? Um, I know the, the ordinary developer or average developer is more like an introverted person, but they like to celebrate just like we all do, um, and I can only encourage that. And sometimes they need, to be, they need a bit of a, a kick in their, in their butt, but then um, you're going to have fun. Last theme is engage. And I think that is maybe most important. Um, share your business goals, right? Maybe that sounds a little bit obvious. Uh, who, who works with OKRs? Works pretty beautiful with us. Yeah, I guess it's almost standard now, or maybe not. Uh, I believe the, the, the beauty of OKRs uh, is you can very well align the whole company, the different departments to common goals, right? Um, also here, please don't forget your other departments. When we introduced uh, um, OKRs, uh, somebody from HR asked me, but what, 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 what can I do? Like, how does, that, uh, how does that apply to me and my duties? But again, across the, uh, departments, you can introduce OKRs and therefore make people understand what your longer-term vision and strategy is. I think equally important, and that is... Uh, uh, in uh, like uh, bi-directional, please encourage knowledge sharing within teams. I think there's many, there's often these silos, and also here I called it black box earlier, specifically in tech teams where they don't really tell what they are up to, but they also don't understand what a customer wants and they don't understand what your market team wants. Uh, we, uh, I introduced uh, fixed knowledge sharing. We could maybe almost call it uh, job shadowing. Um, schedules, so where you spend time with somebody in the company who you normally not interact with, so that can be a developer sitting, job shadowing, a customer care person, for example, or the other way around. And then I guess to round it off, um, you must understand tech better, right? Um, and I think that is really difficult, so uh, I guess you, you guys understand products, you understand what's, or predict what's going to happen in the industry and the likes, but I still see across the board, um, if I um, report back to management and the likes, people are scared of tech and I don't really understand that. Uh, maybe you should do some coding classes or whatever, but please don't be scared, engage with the people and then have fun with the cool intergalactic cats. Thank you. Niels, thank you. As an ex-coder, thank you. <laughs> right? um, although I don't like cats so much. Now, do you think it's easier for you to manage tech people because they respect you as a fellow tech person? 100%. Um, so if, if I interview people as the managing director, which is what I am, um, everybody assumes automatically I'm not a tech person and they are surprised that I actually am. And that helps. Okay. Right. And now, um, the question's going to be, I th and I want to actually tackle this last question, will AI replace coders? Right? In now, maybe not completely, but maybe a lot of what they do. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes and no, right? So, so what we are seeing now, and, and I think that's a, a big benefit actually, um, where kind of the time-consuming tasks of the software development workflow, so quality assurance, um, test-driven development, deployments to the service and all of that, orchestration and so forth, I think that pretty soon actually can be replaced almost entirely by AI. And again, I think that's a big benefit for us developers because you don't have to worry about QA that much anymore, but the machine takes care of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
what, what we are wondering at the moment is not will AI replace coders, but more how does it change the role of a developer and which new roles are introduced. I think in the early stages of that LLM stuff, well, it's like four months ago or five months ago, um, there was uh, almost a job description of a prompter. So like as in, how do you write the correct prompts to get the, the answer you want? Yeah. Um, I think that is going to become part of a developer's role. I don't think that's exclusively. But again, um, I think we are thinking at the moment, what is the coder's duty in two or three years? Yes. Yeah. However, I think that like, like we uh, heard uh, yesterday about, you know, we overestimate what's going to happen in the short term and underestimate what's going to happen in the long term. Yeah. I, happen, I happen to think that the role of, a, of many of the coding roles for the more day-to-day -day tasks, not necessarily the more creative tasks, yeah. will get replaced. And, I agree. and as we saw in your presentation, right, you got it, you know, chat GPT banged out some VBA yeah. code and, and there was a couple of pages True. created for you. Uh, what advice would you give a, uh, to a tech person trying to become a CEO? You know, um, sorry for this uh, expression. I think uh, they need to put their balls on the table. Uh, and, <laughs> and I think, uh, again, also here, uh, more introverted people would not necessarily do that. Um, so I see that really often where it's difficult for a developer to, you know, uh, talk to people, get out, uh, get on stage and basically own and at the end of the day uh, lead. Uh, we put uh, quite a bit of effort also into, uh, I don't think you can call it leadership classes, but, but really that to encourage uh, ownership and leadership. Uh, yeah, and I think then uh, it can work out. Okay. Last question. Well, with autonomy and trust comes accountability. Okay. How do you hold teams, or geez, it came down one, how do you hold teams accountable for their results and deadlines? Mm. Super interesting question and, and, and difficult to answer. Um, in, in, in software engineering, it's difficult to measure on KPIs. I think that's almost like an unanswered question. So, so how do you really measure a developer? Uh, lines of codes doesn't work out, commits doesn't work out. Um, so do you do like a normal performance review and you go like, mm, you know. So I, I think it's difficult to, um, to measure that by, by number. Um, I'm obviously well aware that uh, deadlines are a big problem. Uh, I think most of the tech projects, bigger tech projects, are delayed. Um, I think there, um, maybe it just helps to don't set a particular deadline. And you say that thing needs to be live on the 1st of January, but rather iterate and uh, kind of see what happens and uh, yeah, encourage like more kind of you know, smaller goals and smaller iterations rather than chasing that big uh, deadline. Do you think there's an element of understanding the bigger picture, right? Because the, 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 whatever the tech project is, it's linked into a sales and marketing effort, mm. it's linked into, I don't know, it could be a price rise or a new product launch or whatever and so on. There's a, there's a broader picture rather than just you're building a 100%. chunk of code. Yeah. And I think that's also what I meant earlier with the knowledge sharing, right? Or, or, or like business KPIs and, and the likes. If the developers are in their box and they don't really know what's going on, it can only, it, it can't work out well, right? Yeah. So again, also here, I think your point is, uh, is, is, is perfect. Make them understand what the bigger picture is and then, yeah. Now, how do you get over the, the fundamental issue of developers love to build Rolls Royces? You know, beautiful, sure. it's perfect, the code is great. Uh, Maybe not comments always because it'd be boring but they want to build it perfect, and you just want the VW Beetle, because it's going yeah. to go from A to B. How do, you, how do you balance that up when you're working with the, the cool Yeah, guys? very, very good question. And, and I guess and it's also that like, almost overused word of MVP, where you start with like a, what could that be, like a Citroen maybe? Yes. <laughs> a Fiat Uno or something like that. Um, so we start really small and, and then build it up. But that's uh, true, that's a big problem. And developers are also proud, they always believe they build the best solution and the best rules for us, which is often not true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think we should settle on the Volkswagen. Yeah. And then the other related issue is the not invented here syndrome. So someone comes in from the outside, I've got a piece of code or technology, I, I work with, the, with, with some other businesses that, that, I'm, that I'm involved in, and they've got some very good way of doing stuff with data. Yeah. Now, when they talk to internally the teams, especially in the tech teams, I know we can do that as well. Yeah, right? yeah true. Okay, and, and because they'll always say they're always very protective. How do you handle the fact that there are codes of data out, or, sorry, codes of um, 
uh, libra you know, libraries of code out there that you can use and just plug and play and do calls to them and, mm. and save yourself a lot of time rather than just rewriting what al already exists. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, I think... Um I guess uh, coming back to, to the Rolls Royce, you know, I'm I'm not too deep into car manufacturing, but I guess that's like department building the doors and department taking care of the seats and so forth, right? So so like very almost like siloed, and I guess we typically also do that with like data teams and then front end teams and uh, mobile apps team and AI teams. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, also there is an added complexity because how do you bring it all together again? Um, so yeah. Yep. Okay. Fantastic, Nils. Excellent. Cool. Good luck. Thank you so much. Building the business. Cool. Thank you.